Hi everybody and welcome back to Beer, Wine, and Shine. Today we're finally going to run that silo corn. So let's get the bucket over here and let's get after it. So if you look here, you can see the yellow corn that uh, I didn't get crushed. It's floating to the top. If you look real close, you can see a bunch of bubbling, okay? It almost looks like it's still fermenting. But what I think it is, is just off-gassing because I moved it on, it's got wheels. And when you move it, it'll, it'll bubble like that. I went ahead and got me a sample here. That is, I don't know, it's like two marks of below 1 point, or <clears throat> 1.0. Okay, so that's like a 0 0.96, 0 0.996. So it's done. It's dry. We're going to get it over there in the still. Okay, guys. Got everything set up here. Uh, one thing that me and a friend of mine have kind of struggled with a little bit is getting the mash from the mash barrel to the still. And the reason we have a little bit of an issue is because so we ferment on the grain. Well, there's a lot of grain particles that float on top and float in the middle and you know, most of it's down at the bottom, but there are a lot of particles that still float. And when you run a pump, it just wants to suck it up and clog the pump, okay? Uh, an auto siphon, exact same thing, it's even worse. Um, an auto siphon is almost useless um, in my experience. As far as my experience and their experience goes, it's pretty much useless. So that's why we use pumps. Because, I mean, I have done the whole scooping, dipping, you know, get a container and skip, scoop it. That takes forever. And I'm lazy. And I always end up making a mess. So, I'm still working on this. I'm still trying to figure it out. But this is the best thing I've come up with so far. Is, um, it's a hop spider. It's what it is. It costs about 50 bucks. Uh... But basically, I just set this down in there. And because it's a screen, and it's a screen all the way around and underneath, it has to clog the whole thing before it stops pumping. But then I've got this. It's a funnel. I picked it up from my local brew shop. And it's got a super fine mesh screen in it. And that just snaps into place. Okay, you can also lay some cheesecloth in there whatever because some of the fine particles that can make it through the hop spider even though hop spider is really fine mesh um but it's a pump so it's sucking it through this catches that stuff this doesn't let nothing through okay so let me stand up here and get this show on the road now i just got a submersible pump here it's a pretty big pump actually um now i got too much hose here i am gonna have to hold this up here but because i'm testing this hop spider theory normally i would just leave it here and kind of lower it down as it goes i'm actually going to set this all the way down the bottom which isn't actually very far because of all the grains. I don't strain my grains. Um, really. I, I just think it takes too much time and you don't get as, enough out of it to make it worth it in my professional opinion, of course. 
this is just my process see I've got I've got this hop spider on the bottom and the pump is on the bottom literally sucking on top of the grain bed and I am not getting anything in this other funnel over here in this other screen whoops I think I got my pump up too high they're all starting to get some white stuff well there is still quite a bit of liquid in here now getting this mash in here was a pain in the butt uh, the pump worked great the pump method with the hop spider works great However, I had it in that little 10 gallon barrel. I've got a 13 gallon barrel around here somewhere. I think I put it in the other room. I should have used that to ferment with because I had so many grains that the grain was halfway up the barrel. And because I also didn't get them all ground some of them were still kernels that soaked up a lot of water uh, or retained water should I say so if I would have put it in my 13 gallon barrel it's got a wider base on it and that grain bed would have only been this instead of this does that make sense so I normally don't strain my grains I had to this time because I only had about this much in the pot it was like this much in the... right now it's it's almost full it's about four gallons um, well, no, it's an eight gallon pot, so it, it's probably got a full five gallons in it now. Um, but I had to, you know, it's pain in the butt. It's, so anyway, I ended up having to use my grandfather, use the big basket, let it strain through there. But then I had a lot of yeast particles that would not go through my mesh on my funnel so i had to put that in my so then i had to run all the liquid through my hop spider it ended up clogging the hop spider um it, it i made a mess it was it was a pain in the butt these are the complications that you run into you know when you ferment on the grain i think it's a better way to do it i think it produces a better product um, cause you get that flavor. Uh, but these are the complications. So like I said, one more time in hindsight, <clears throat> I need to start using wider based barrels to allow the, the grain bed to be only a couple inches at the bottom instead of, you know, eight inches up, 10 inches up the side of a 10 gallon barrel. So that's my recommendation there if anybody else has any ideas on how they you know do things off the, you know strain it off the grain and when they ferment on the grain uh, let me know it's still kind of a work in progress for me I, I don't like scooping all that stuff out you know it, I don't like using a bucket to dip down and I just make a mess <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is find a method that works great and with minimal cleanup to clean up and after i get it right that's what it'll be so now i finally got all this mash in my eight gallon pot i'm gonna run a i've decided to run two inch column it's like a 18 inch two inch column with uh I think that's called a live it condenser but I could be wrong um, I just decided to run this this time I've got several different setups several different ways I run depending on what I'm running and what I'm after so this is the way I've decided to do it this time anyway we're heating up and we're gonna start running here in a minute 
there was a couple comments on my first video that I didn't comment on because I wanted to verify my facts and I decided just to put it in here in this video. One thing a commenter said was that because it was silo corn, it had a lot of um, stock, like corn stock in it. That's probably why I didn't get the gravity that I wanted. Well, I asked the person that I got the corn from just to verify because I was pretty sure I was right, but I wanted to make sure there's two different types of silage. There's corn stock like silage, which is where they just chop up the stalks and anything that's left corn that's left over, they put it in a silo or on the ground and cover it in a big thing. That's called silage. This is siloed corn. So it went through the combine and uh, got all the corn off, off the shucks and off the stalks, right? So there is some stock debris and dirt and stuff in there because it hasn't been filtered yet, but it is like 98% just corn, okay? But it was siloed. So instead of taking it to the elevator where they would run it through a screen and then bag it, they just put it in a big silo to ferment. Okay, hope that clears that up. The other thing is, is that the amount of corn that I used wasn't ever gonna give me the gravity I was looking for. I did the math on it. I don't have it in front of me and I forgot, but I was going off the capacity and I got a little backwards and, cause I was going off the capacity of the grandfather. Um, which I think, I, I don't think I've maxed it out, but um, I think inevitably I was always gonna use sugar. I just wasn't thinking straight. So anyway, hope that clears some of that up and uh, we'll be back when this starts running. All right, guys. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see us very well, but we are dripping. We're at uh, right at 180 degrees on the head temperature, so I'm going to get the speed set right, and here we go. I hope you can hear me and see everything okay. I'm going to switch out my jars here. This one's my four shots and heads. I normally pull off a full pint, pretty much is my standard. But I don't know how much I'm going to get out of this. I don't really expect to get a whole lot. Probably about half a gallon. So, uh, yeah, that's only four pints. Or, yeah, that's four pints. But I'll tell you, this is, uh, this is tasting... Um, I'm gonna now this is probably not my my keep jar probably but the way it tastes coming off the still I would really really like what did I do I think I fuckered up. I think I was supposed to. Because that should be 10. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Okay. Blooper reel. Okay, so. I asked my friend. And she said that. This silo corn. When first run it off will have kind of a buttery taste however in the bottle that taste kind of goes away over time
That's pretty good. That's probably, I mean, at this very early stage, that's probably the best corn I've ever ran. Um, because my other thing in the bobber over there needs washed, along with like eight hours worth of dishes, I'm just going to use my other little thing in the bobber here. We're going to see what proof she's running off at. To me, that's a lot more acceptable. Um, it's reading 132 for my first runnings. Um, you know, when I run it a lot slower, I usually get about 160 on a one and done. And I'm just never happy with the with the taste of it. Um, now this is cold, so I need to do some calculations, and I'm not going to bore you with that because I have to look it up. Um, I'll probably t t um, test it again actually after it warms up to room temperature. I mean, this is uh, this is fogging on glass. It's that cold. So 132. I do believe as it warms up, it'll go up higher. So I'm going to guess it's going to be somewhere right there about the 140, which is right where I want it to be for, for starting. I want to start off at about 140 and end at about 100. And then when you mix it all together, it should be right at about 120. That's my goal. And so far, I'm, I'm not running fast, so... I think it's just the temperature difference. I don't know. I might keep that jar. <laughs> this is some good stuff. I'm not going to lie. Um, it has a sour taste to me. Um, not like... How do I describe this? It's not like eating a sour warhead or anything like that. But it's a sourish malted just kind of funky but it's good it's good funk like I'm excited <laughs> sorry <I'll> calm down <laughs> yeah. right now at two pints an hour I'm running off about 135 proof uh, I can test it again. It's warming up in this jar uh, or in this cylinder here. Yeah. 138 proof. Okay. Now, if I was running at a pint an hour or half a pint an hour, this thing would be running at 160 proof. Because inside this column, it's just refluxing, which is stripping all of your flavor and giving you more pure alcohol, but there's no flavor in it. And I've never been happy when I run a distillate off at 160 starting off, especially not on a, on a one and done run like this one is here. Okay, I want a little bit of reflux to happen in there, but not a lot. All right, we're back. We just got done running. Uh, oh, man. You know, I'm going to start off by saying I have had a lot of different things happen during my distillation journey. Learning to be a distiller I have ran different setups different speeds different liquors um, but I think I'm finally starting to get it down I hope that I'm not saying this too early but ever since I have bumped I know I keep going back to speed but ever since I've bumped up my speed from running 
just got awful slow. I've really been happier with my liquor. This run here was a good run. I am very happy with just everything that happened with this distillation. I ran it right at the right speed. About, um, I ran it about, uh, I think my slowest jar was probably about 25 minutes for a half pint. Uh, and my fastest jar was about 15. So I averaged about 20 minutes a jar, 22 minutes a jar, 16 minutes a jar. I tried to keep it around that 15, 16 mark, but in jar one started coming off at 136, 138 proof. And I just want to show you this. This is jar 15. It's at, uh, I think, 100 proof. So this is the first time I've ever actually ran all the way down to 100 proof. Also, my temperature up at my head has never reached 200. This time, it did. It reached 200 at about 85 proof. Uh, but it still got there. And I ran it all the way down to 80, 85 proof. Um, so this one here, jar 15, was 100 proof. Tastes good. But these two last jars were cloudy. They were a little whiter, whitish, just a little cloudy, and they don't taste good. That's the first time I've ever had a jar turn cloudy. And it's the first time that that wet cardboard, wet dog came in with the clouds. Never did, never got any oils, never got any, never got that oily stuff. Uh... I think it actually, I could start taste. Oh, there it is. I grabbed the wrong jars, that's what happened. Yeah, there you go. Can you see that? Can you see these two jars? Can you see the difference? Look at the difference in them two jars. Yeah, see how blue, the blue tape is on the back side on both these jars, okay? Look how clear, much clearer this one is versus this one. This is one jar difference. Look at the difference. I've never had that happen. I've heard of it, but I've never actually had it. So, I mean, pretty much just everything kind of just fell. And, and as far as the taste goes, I mean, we can get a whole jar one here. It's about 136 proof. And I only pulled off half a pint of heads and four shots. So I don't even know if this is a good jar. I don't know if that's a keeper or not. It's a little burning when it goes down. Let's get jar. <coughs> Let's get jar eight. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, this is probably the best corn I've ever had. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't think that first jar is probably going to be a keeper. Like I said, I only pulled off a half pint of heads and four shots. Uh, I'm not going to taste this right now. Um, I got a lot of cleanup I need to do, and this needs to set and mellow a little bit anyway. Uh, so, unfortunately, you're not going to get to probably see that unless I make another video of it. But so there's 15 jars here that, not including the cap, the two cloudy ones. Um, so those are definitely no keepers. If I were to guess, I would say I'm probably going to keep around jar three to probably 14, 13, 14. So all in all, you know, that's three quarts, three quarts, three quarters of a gallon. 
So I got three quarters of a gallon of liquor here out of something I thought I was only going to get half a gallon. Uh, so, you know, and the, the taste of it, uh, my friend said that she got a buttery taste out of it right away, but that buttery went away. I'm not getting the buttery flavor to it at all. However, it, it's got a malty funk to it that is pleasing. Uh, you can definitely tell it's corn, but you can definitely tell that it's it's different corn, silo corn. And, you know, I'm just rambling now, so, I mean, all in all, I, I've just had, I'm very pleased with the way this whiskey turned out. I really hope that it does not change in the jar too much, that it just mellows and kind of blends. Um, jar one is definitely uh, a little fiery. It, it burned going down. Uh, jar eight didn't, jar five didn't. Um, so, yeah. And if you if you guys watch any of my shorts, you know I can, you know, it, it's, it's not because it's 138 proof is the reason why it burns. You know, to me anyway. So, uh, anyway, I'm just rambling and that's the end of this video. So, if you're still around, uh, thank you. And we'll see you next time on Beer, Wine, and Shine.